All right, so I know you've already done this already, but for some reason, if you have not, make sure you register for our upcoming free two-day trader summit starting on November 24th and ending on November 25th. It's going to be an awesome two-day workshop. We have some very distinguished guests coming in to talk about investing, trading, speculation, and everything around it. What we want to do is we want to prepare you for the opportunities that are going to exist in 2021, just in case you missed the ones that existed this year in 2020. So in the show notes is the link. Sign up, secure your spot, whether you're going to attend live or whether you're going to watch the recordings. We need you to register that way we can shoot you the email. All right. I'll see you guys there. And I hope you guys enjoy today's episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. Traders will, will sabotage themselves in trading, and, and one of the easiest ways to do that is by looking at the price chart, right? I read the book Pitbull by Marty Swartz, good book. One of the, the, the biggest lessons or one of the, the biggest takeaways I have from that book was a note that he got from a trading mentor of his that said basically like 90, 95% of the work is done before you ever enter the trade. And that's true, right? If you think about our trading process, right? Identify, predict, decide execute we're looking for entries we're measuring stops we're measuring targets looking at risk profile right all of that is the hard work right the the analysis we just did on euro dollar we spent like 20 minutes drawing fibs and all this fun stuff right all of that is the hard work right to set up your trade to tell you hey should i be involved in this once you get involved in a trade right what else do we have to do there's probably only one thing we can do right what's that one thing Drink coffee, or, or <laughs> drink coffee. Yes, um, that, well, that's that's a given, right? That should that should happen before the trade. Yeah, if, if there's anything, it, it's risk management, right? The only the only other thing we should have to do is risk management. If we have a risk management tactic strategy where we're we're trailing stops or or whatnot, um, or if we're if we're like kind of we looked at with the stochastics the other day where we're doing an active exit. That's the only thing we have to look at, right? But that's one thing versus one or two things versus all of the other things, right? So most of the hard work is done. So when you're a trader and you're in a trade and you're you're just, you know, you're you're highly emotional, even if you don't think it, you're highly emotional because money's at risk and we're all highly emotional when it comes to money for the most part. Um, you're doing nothing but driving yourself crazy by peeking around different time frames. And what you'll see a lot of traders do is they'll they'll enter a trade, let's say on the, the four hour. Then all of a sudden they're like, well, let's look at the daily. Let's look at the weekly. And, and they're just looking for reasons to convince themselves to exit the trade, right? Or they're going down to like the five minute. Oh my gosh, Akil, did you see that candle on the five minute? I'm like, no, my, my entry's on the four hour. The hell am I looking at the five minute for? Like, what's that? what is that going to tell me? But I, I know some of you have done it, right? Anybody? Anybody want to raise their hand and admit to it? You dirty, dirty people. You dirty, filthy traders. Yeah, going down to the minute chart. Oh my gosh, bullish engulfing candle on the one minute. I'm like, what, what does that mean? Right? You're on a four hour chart. There's 240 of those candles in one candle on your four hour chart. Stop looking at it. But you'll see that a lot because again, we're, we're bored. We're looking for, we're overthinking things, whatever that reason may be. But it's important to understand, right? The, the most important thing about the candle, right? It, let, let's, let's put the, uh, I'm trying to think of a way to word this because it's not irrelevant, but how much relevance does an open active candle have? Right? How much relevance does, a, does an in-progress candle have? It has some, right? Because it's still telling you a story. It, it, you, you still have the, the the highs and the lows. You know the range of it. But it's but the most important part by far is the close. Would you guys agree? The close of the candle. That's what means anything, right? It's kind of like watch like like a box score in a game where it's like okay, like a, you know you take whatever sporting event you want to take, 
And yeah, first quarter, second quarter, first half, first, you know, all the stuff in between matters. But at the end of the day, it's all about who won the game, right? You could say that a team got out to a good lead and, and blew it. But, you know, it's okay. It tells you they fought well. They gave effort. Then they broke down. But at the end of the game, it's who won and who lost, right? It's the result. It's the ending result. So, and I've done this a few times. We're, we're in NBA playoff mode right now, right? And these dumb games start at 9 o'clock at night. And that's, you know, that's very close to my background or my, uh, my bedtime. Oh, even, oh, there we go. Even better example. We'll pick on people from the A, right? From uh, Atlanta. The Atlanta Falcons, right? An NFL franchise that have consistently blown big leads, right? The past two weeks, right? They have been up like 20 points and 15 points. Multiple scores going into the end of the game. And they've blown it. They've lost. Last week, the Buffalo Bills were up like a million points on the Rams. The Rams came back, took the lead. But then the Buffalo Bills won. The story matters. And we talk about that a lot in, in, our, in our candlestick course, obviously. But the end result is what matters most. So you can't make a decision off of an in-progress candle. You can't be in a trade and then look in the daily and be like, oh, no, I got to get out of this because this daily candle, which has about eight hours until it completes, right? It's at halftime, essentially, right? This daily candle looks, looks kind of shady, looks kind of suspect, looks kind of bad. Looks kind of scary. That's that's feeding into the emotional mistake. And, and understand when we're in that emotional mindset, all, all we do is we want all, all we want is an out. Especially if a, tra- if a trade's going against you, even if a trade's going in your favor, to be honest, all we want is an out. If a trade's going against us and we haven't hit our stop loss, all we want is an excuse to exit. I think it's going to lose. So if I exit now, I only lose ten pips and versus twenty pips. Or if a trade's going in our favor, ah, it looks like we're going to reverse soon. I'm up 50 pips. I should just take it now instead of looking for my trade to hit 100 pips. We're just looking for that out. And you know how trading is. If we want something, we'll find it. We'll make it. We'll make an excuse. So I thought it was a really good question because, and I responded to the trader. I said, you know what? That's not a very nice looking candlestick. But it doesn't have value until the close because I can come back at the end of the day and it could look completely different. It can go from a, a bullish pin bar to a bearish engulfing candle by the time it, it closes. So if it closes, that's going to tell me something about the market that I should be paying attention to. But as of right now, while that candle is in progress, it doesn't mean all too much. And we need to understand that as traders because we're, we're looking for that out. I had the same thing on the chat yesterday with a, with a trader who was looking for a graceful exit. Yep. A graceful exit. And what we discussed was, I, I said, with the graceful exit technique. Anybody unfamiliar with graceful exit, by the way, before we get into it? I don't want to just go barking off terminology without people understanding what the heck I'm talking about. Poor Atlanta Falcons. Fire that coach. Um, so gra- graceful exit is basically a, a technique to bail on your trade. And I don't mean it in a negative, but it's technically based. So it's basically like if you enter a trade and you get a a signal on your chart that tells you you're more likely, you're most likely to be wrong, then instead of waiting for price action to continue to rally up and, and, and hit your, your full stop, you exit right away. So think about if you envision a double top, for example, you got short on a double top. What would invalidate a double top or any significant level of structure? What would invalidate it? A higher, high, higher close, right? A break and close above. So once you see that break and close above, we know that because we, we, we have our principles on how to read a price chart. We know that if we have a break and close above, we identify a violation of structure. Our prediction now shifts from, hey, structure is holding. We're likely to go short from structure is violated. We're likely to go long. Now, obviously, a break and close above doesn't necessarily hit your stop loss. So you can have a break and close above that, you know, in in your current trade situation, maybe it puts you down, you know, negative 20. But your stop loss is still that ATR away. So your stop loss is still maybe 20 pips away where you had a a total of uh, 40 pips risk, for example. So the graceful exit is basically saying, hey, the market has told me that I'm more likely to be wrong because, you know, the reason I got into the trade has basically been invalidated. What I'm going to do is now that I have that newfound information, I'm going to exit the trade, 
take my 20 pip hit because it's better than taking a full 20 pip hit, right? It's basically saying, hey, I know I'm gonna lose. Let me get out of here with minimal damage instead of taking the full damage. And there's different ways to do it. You can you can exit at market. You can wait till, you know, if price comes back to break even, you can get out for break even, different techniques. But the point is you're, you're exiting the trade based on a specific signal in the market. But the conversation that we were having about graceful exits is that the most important thing about a graceful exit is that it needs to be predetermined, right? If all of a sudden you're, if you're in a trade and you're watching it, right, tick by tick, and it goes against you, and then all of a sudden you say, hey, I think I wanna be a grace, I wanna take a graceful exit, is that not more of an emotional decision? Is, not, is that not more pain avoidance? Where the only reason you're thinking about that graceful exit is because you're, 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 you're in a current pain-filled state and you see that as your way out of this torture, right? It's an emotional decision. And you can't make those because there's no consistency to emotional decisions, right? So it's got to be predetermined. It's got to be part of your strategy. No different than like your entry technique. You can't go into a trade and be like, ah, I'm going I'm to enter this way this time because I feel it right? No consistency to that. So with graceful exits, you have to predetermine where it's like, hey, if I get a higher, high, higher close, then I will take a graceful exit. If I take a graceful exit, this is how I take it. So we're taking the emotion out of it and we're following the plan. And there's consistency in doing it that way. And you guys all know my formula, right? Consistent analysis plus consistent execution equal consistent results. You take that consistency out, you're done.